Hi, everyone. I am Kanisha Baynard from boldlivingtoday.com. I'm super excited to be partnering again with the Santa Clara County Library System. And today I wanna to talk to you about scholarships. So why don't you grab a notebook or grab your mobile device so that you can take a full few notes. And I will talk to you about five tips on how to secure scholarships. So this is part one in the series. Scholarships for college, part one. Today's discussion, we're going to talk about college funding through scholarships, where to find these opportunities and how to create your own personalized toolkit. Scholarships, as most people know, are gifts. There's a lot of scholarships offered by schools that might be a college or university, employers, individual, private companies, nonprofits, different affinity groups, religious organizations. So there's a lot of opportunities for a lot of different scholarships out there. Merit-based scholarships, these are based on your grades. Typically, people who are exceeding a certain standard or a certain level will be eligible for merit-based scholarships. And oftentimes, people are seeking these out based on different competitions that are academic-based that they have participated in. Other scholarship types, there are the need-based, which are based on finances, some that are specific to different groups. So maybe English majors, women, somebody who's participated in a particular group or sports. Um, there's scholarships that are connected to different organizations and then there's different affiliations. So you definitely wanna do a good job at looking at who you know, what relatives um, are, what, which relatives are connected to different organizations and what scholarship opportunities that might be available for you to pursue. Here are the first five strategies out of 10 on what you can do to, to secure your scholarships. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you create a professional email address. Some people typically use the one from their high school. I always encourage people to use one that is based on a free provider like Gmail, Hotmail, and you wanna make sure that you are sharing this email address, this specific professional email address with your parents and your um, college counselor, anybody who's going to help you work on these scholarships. So you have your personal email that you use, but then this particular email for scholarships should be able to be um, accessed by parents so that they can support what you're doing. The next thing you want to do is to be sure you utilize an online file maintenance. Um, one that's super popular right now that a lot of people are using, Google Docs, super easy, very accessible. This will allow you to make um, tracking systems for which scholarships you're applying to, when the due dates are going to um, become due and you have to submit different things. Um, the different elements of the scholarship they might be asking for, essays, transcripts, a photograph, um, you can also house different forms within your online sharing system. You can have your transcript information, different forms you filled out and scanned. So you definitely want to have one spot that's electronic for all these materials that different scholarships will request from you and ask for. Um, academic advising software. This is a super important and very easy organizational tool. A lot of the schools offer this. Um, it might be Blackboard, Canvas. Um, what's the other one I can't think? Oh, Inf Infinite Campus. That might be one that you're also using. So what you should do is anytime you do something at the end of that month, you want to update it. You want to add any volunteer hours. You want to add any awards you might have won or any things you've participated in. It's really important to keep this up to date so that you're not searching for the information when it's time to sub, uh, submit information for a scholarship. And it's another way for you to search for scholarships too. Typically schools have a college and career counselor who will add different information to this advising software. So it's really important to get familiar with it and use it to your advantage so that you can keep up to date and stay very organized. Um, the fourth tip is to make sure you clean up your web presence. You definitely want to start by doing a search on a web browser of yourself. Put your first and last name in. You might want to put your first, middle, and last name in. And just make sure that there's no information connected to your name that's inaccurate. You want to update any of your accounts. If you're using social media, you definitely want to make sure that um, you have the correct 
web presence there. You can delete anything that's not up to date. You can close accounts if you're no longer using them. You can make them private if you don't want anyone to be able to do an open web search on you. So you just want to make sure that you have a very professional presence online. So if anyone does a web search of your name, nothing will come up that will, you know, make you feel embarrassed or make you feel like you are not um, in a space to be eligible for that particular scholarship. Some people do take the time to create an online portfolio, depending on what they're intending to do for a post-secondary option. So that might be an art portfolio, that might be a portfolio with your music. You could also do a writing portfolio. Super fun to create um, a portfolio with a free online tool. You don't have to spend a lot of money or any money at all to do that if you have time and, and if that's something that interests you. The fifth tip is to create a personal data sheet. And this is something that you would put in your shared file system. And a personal data sheet means that it's information that you know you're going to have to submit every time you are filling out a scholarship application. That might be information like your name, your birthday, your address, the name of your school, your school's code, things like that, so that you don't have to spend time each Every, every time you want to submit an application, you don't want to constantly have to look for this information. It's super important to have it in one spot to help your productivity and your time management. And then also, everybody typically is busy at this time of year because they're doing their regular school stuff on top of looking for scholarships. So it's great if you can cut down time by having all of that information in one spot. So you want to create a personal data sheet. So those are the first five tips of Scholarships 101. This is part one of the scholarship series. There will be a part two that will list the last five tips. So if you have any questions or are unsure of anything, feel free to reach out. You can contact me at boldlivingtoday.com. And then you can also connect with me on my social media channel channels. All right. Good luck, everyone.